And welcome back to the True Word Television and Painting the Scriptures. So today we're going to continue to discuss some of the thoughts around Ecclesiastics 11.1, but we're going to go further than that, and we're going to look at the next segment of what that thought process looks like. So just to refresh your memory, I'm going to reread Ecclesiastics 1, 11 verses 1 and 2. Send your grain across the sea and in time profits will flow back to you. But divide your investments among many places, for you do not know what risks might lie ahead. And if we go back in Ecclesiastics and we go to chapter 6, and we look at verses 9 and 10 and 11, starting in verse 9, enjoying what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless, like chasing the wind. Everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would be, so there is no use arguing with God about your destiny. The more words you speak, the less they mean, so what good are they? So when we examine God's Word today, and that thought process, God took me back to the very, very beginning. So when I say the very beginning, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the Passion Translation, it actually reads like this. In the very beginning, the living expression was already there, and the living expression was with God, yet fully God. They were together face to face in the very beginning, and through his creative inspiration, this living expression made all things, for nothing has existence apart from him. Life came into being because of him, for his life is light for all humanity. So when we talk about our lives, when we talk about where our lives are going or you know, what's happening around us. Sometimes we have to go back to the very, very beginning. 
So as we paint today, so now we're going to take our canvas and we're going to start to put the detail into the picture. And I think the detail is important today because sometimes we have a fuzzy picture. We have a dream or we have a thought process that is not always well formed. And so we need to really dig into the details of what God has for our life. Because when we do that, when we begin to really sit and see what God created for us, what he desires for us, um, what plans he had for us so long ago, because from the very beginning, God's had plans. You were designed with a plan in mind. And so I'm just putting some white here on the canvas to kind of make the cresting of the white water on the river. So I'm just using, I'm trying to keep my brush fairly dry and just put some pigment on it so that I can brush it onto the canvas. And I need a little bit bigger bristle to do this well. So I'm trying to be very light with my water so that I can get more pigment onto the canvas because with white on top of a color it does not show very well and if it's too wet it's just going to be thin so want to create a bit of that rippling effect that you get on the white water tips. It's such a balance between keeping it, there we go, wet enough and yet dry enough to get that white to show up on there. So we might feel like we are in white water. But what God really wants to speak to you today is about the fact that from the very beginning, He's had a plan for you. He's known all about you. He's never left you behind in, in any of that. I think our biggest challenge in life is sometimes we think that he's left us behind or we feel distant from God. Yet in reality, God is always holding us. There's a song I was listening to on the way here and it re really reiterated how we might feel that distance, but God's holding us in his arms. So if you can picture today, God holding you in his arms. <laughs> in the middle of the white water, Facing a bear, God's got you. God's got you no matter what is coming at you. Do you feel that? Do you feel his presence? And if you don't feel his presence, I'm going to intercede for you today so that you can begin to feel his presence in your life and in your heart. Because as an intercessor, I can do that. I can intercede on your behalf. I can intercede with the God of creation. And today I really, I really feel that someone out there is struggling with white water and fear and God just wants to let you know that he's got you and he's close by he has not left you alone or behind at all he's got you in his arms just as he's planned from the very beginning of time God's ultimate plan is for us.
trying to put all this white on here, it can be very slow and tedious to get enough white water onto the... So you can begin to see a little bit of in the canvas. I'm going to actually come in here and put a little bit of pearl eyes, so just so that it shows up a little bit more. So God has plans. God designed you for a purpose. God wants you to live a life that is productive and happy. God did not design us to live with a less than mentality. God designed us to live in His presence. So I'm just putting some darker tone blue in here now. Pick up that flowing of the river. So I'm just dragging the pigment in across the canvas. Just as the water would flow. If you do what I did, and you get some color where you don't want it, you can just take your Kleenex and take it right back off. It's the beautiful thing about working with watercolor. can always... Hi, take it and drag it along take it off and we can see the motion of the river get some different shades going in here So from the very, very beginning, our creative God wants to get creative with us. And Jesus is the creative alive. He was the Word. He was the Word that came alive. I think sometimes that we have a hard time wrapping our mind around that thought. That He is the Word of God. See, if we begin to understand that, He is our weapon. He is the one that can come into our battles and bring all His creative power into being. And that's an amazing place to be. When you begin to think that Jesus, the creative God of the universe, is our ultimate weapon.
So I'm just making a nice river here for the bear to fish in. A bear is always going to be a bear. He was created to be a bear. From the beginning of time to the end of his day, a bear is a bear. So we got some nice river action going here now. So Jehovah Jireh, the God in the beginning, the God in the end. God of creation created us for a plan and a purpose now I'm gonna let that dry a little bit before I go back in with a little more white I think we're gonna go and play with the rock a little bit now just get a little more texture into the rock face Now, if you're afraid of stepping into your dreams, stepping out into the plans that God might have for you, see, when we understand that Jesus is the Word, Jesus is the creative, He is God with flesh on, but before that, he was the Word in the beginning. He has always there and always been there with us. And when we begin to identify that that's the case, he becomes our battle weapon. We may not know exactly what we need to do, but God knows exactly what needs to happen. And He knows how to battle for us. And since He's for us, He's never against us. He wants us to win that war. He wants us to win the battle. So much so that a lot of times when we know how to call on the Word of God, the enemy gets so afraid he just turns on himself and runs. The Word of God, the power of God can create great confusion in the enemy's camp. So the more we can learn to use his Word, to use the Word of God as a weapon, the more we can come out victorious. In our battles. There we go. So now, Let's go tackle Mr. Bear and put some details into Mr. Bear. Gonna get some nail claws here sticking out. Wouldn't want to get caught by those claws, but he's got them ready to catch a fish. 
and he's a watching because he's a hunter. He's ready to catch his fish right out of the water. He's doing what God designed him to do. Who he was created to be. Do we know who we were created to be? Do we know, know who the God of the universe designed us to be? Because he designed each one of us to be something specific, part of his unique creation. Each of us has a plan and a place and a purpose. And maybe this is your time and your purpose. Maybe this is your place right now. Time for you to rise up and to begin to shine the light of God into, into situations around you, into darkness. Because just like Jesus, we are called to be the light of the world. To light the way to Him. To show people the way to Jesus. He's called each one of us to be a light in our own way, in our own unique way. Not everybody's called to pick up a paintbrush. Maybe we're called to be in business so that we have the resources to fund our local churches. Maybe we're called to provide for missionaries and without resources, without us having opportunity to create resources, that missionary doesn't get the funding that they need in order to do the work and following the calling that God has for them. We all have a part to play in God's plans. He doesn't call all of us out to the mission field, but He calls all of us to be part of His plan and to, to do the things that need to be done. And sometimes we think, well, I don't want to do that, or that's too risky. But when we begin to walk with Jesus by our side, with the God of creation leading us and speaking to us, it begins to change everything. Because we are not on our own. We are not alone. He doesn't expect us to do it on our own. Just putting a little light into the bear's coat here. After all, sun reflects off their fur. One of the things that's a little bit tricky with watercolor is getting all the fine detail in around an eye or sometimes you need a very small brush to be able to go in there and to begin to put in some of the detail after that you need it to have in order to give that bear a little bit of facial expression. All right. 
So we'll let him dry for a little bit. And we're going to go play with some trees. We're going to go play in the garden, so to speak. So now we're working on a dry canvas so that we can begin to create some branches and some tree forms before we had did a wet on wet process. So it was a very fluid, it didn't go very far. Now we're going to go back in and we're going to put all the detail in behind the back of the trees. And we're going to put some leaves on them. We've got some willow brush in the forest, so put some willow in there. I like using this funny brush. Where is God asking you to step today? What battle does he want you to fight today? Maybe for, it's for something in your future. Maybe it's to defeat something from your past. What battle is he asking you to face? Because he is our armor. He is our sure victory. And God wants you to know that when you call on Jesus, when you call on the Word of God, that you be can be victorious in your battles. We are never alone. There can be so many things around us that cause us fear and anxiety just like the Israelites back way, way back in Samuel's day and Saul was king. And he had an army, but the army was hiding in the hills. They were afraid and understandably they were afraid because they didn't have any weapons. They didn't have anything but their plowshares and their, their little Farming implements, the only people in the army that had weapons were King Saul and his son Jonathan. Everybody else didn't have a single weapon. Now can you imagine facing an armed army with only a, well, for today's sake, a rake? All I got is my rake. I'm going to go out and battle and I'm going to defeat somebody that's got a sword with my rake. I think I'd be running to the hills too. So I understand why the Israelites were hiding. But Jonathan, Saul's son, he knew that God would go with him into battle. He knew that God was for them. And so he got his sword, and he got a few of his trusted guys, and he went out and he struck the camp at night. And he did a raid on the Philistine camp. And God was so much with him that those Philistines, they turned on each other and they started killing each other. God created so much confusion in that, in that moment. 
See, God went with him. God directed his steps. God went to battle with him. Do we know that God is battling with us? Do we know that he's got us in his arms? Do we know that the smallest word that we speak to Jesus can create confusion for the enemy and that we are able to suddenly become victorious in the strangest of battles. I was just reminded, I was watching a video this week about some black bear cubs. It was a real short video that popped up. And it made me realize that you don't want to climb a tree around a bear. Because these three little clubs were playing and they were chasing each other up and down the tree. And they could climb really, really fast. So being up a tree in the presence of a bear would not be safe. <laughs> they would be right after you, ready to take you for lunch. <laughs> But God can intervene. God could create confusion in that bear's mind. He could send that bear running a completely different direction. Because God has that ability. Jesus is a word of power. When we call in the name of Jesus, it's a word of might. Do we know that word? Do we call on him? Do we feel his presence? Because Jesus can bring peace to the storm. He can defeat our enemies. He can change everything in an instant. Do we trust that? Do we believe that? Do we have our faith muscles at work? Or do we feel like God has deserted us? And right now only the enemy is going to win. Because if we're feeling like that, we need to exercise our faith muscles. Our God is alive and well. He has not forgotten us. He has not forsaken us. He is with us. He is for us. He is never against us. Because he is the God of creation and he created everything in the universe. <laughs> so how's our faith muscle doing today? Do we need to exercise it? Do we need to bring it out? Say, God, I don't have any faith. I'm like Saul, I'm hiding in my tent, or I'm like the rest of the Israelite camp, and I've run for the hills. But do you believe, do you think that it's possible to be a Jonathan and stand on the word of God, that he will never leave you nor forsake you? Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff will comfort me all the days of my life. God is always there. Do we know his promises 
Do we know his word? Do we know what he has in store for us? Do we know that he has a plan for us? Do we believe it? Do we believe in the God of creation? What do we believe? What thoughts come out dominant in our minds? Do we let fear rule our thought processes? Do we let the visual things that we see in the world be dominated in our thinking? Or do we know? Do we trust? Do we have faith? Do we walk where God would have us walk? For the God of creation, the God from the beginning, created you. He knows all about you. And he has a plan. He has a plan that may yet to be unfolding. But we are in a season of new things happening. And he's calling people out of hiding, out of their fences, to get and get their sword and their shield and to learn how to battle in this season. To learn how to pick up the word of God and know his word and declare his word. He is a great and marvelous God. And he has great and marvelous plans for us. Just like this forest of oak trees. God has so many plans. And most of the time, his plans confound the wise. He even says that in scripture. So sometimes what doesn't make any sense in the natural. God has these supernatural thought processes around. And we need to learn to think and flow with God so that we are flowing in the Spirit of God, in the connectedness of God. There's an anointing that God wants to pour out on his people today, on his children. And sometimes it takes a pandemic to wake people up. Sometimes it takes us being in a stressful situation to, to really come to understand how to connect into the kingdom of heaven. Because when we're comfortable, when we're in our comfort zone, it's pretty easy to just want to stay in our comfort zones. So I believe God shook things up a little bit. God has taken the part of our life 
and shook it up with this pandemic because he wants to wake us up. He wants to connect us more to him so that we begin to feel his arms around us. To feel his presence. To know who he is and the plans he has and the purposes we have an amazing God out there but he's not out there he's got you in his arms he's drawing you close to him drawing you into his presence. God saying to you today I'd love to hear back from you to know what God's speaking into your life and maybe to expound on a word for other people maybe there's something that God's putting a message into your mind in your heart and you don't know for sure if it's from him or if it's just your own thinking you know, I'll tell you a story. Sometimes when you're when you have a very rational type of mind, it's hard to know if it's God speaking or if it's just your mind talking to you. And sometimes God will give us experiences to show us that it's him so we know that we know that we know that it's him speaking and for me one of those experiences was when I was praying about speaking in tongues and having my own prayer language and I didn't want to feel like I was just making up words I have a lot of friends that are come from other countries and I pick up sounds and expressions very easily. So I didn't want to feel like this was just something coming out of my mind. And the Pentecostal Sunday, and I was praying and interceding, and I had some friends praying and interceding with me. And when I started speaking in tongues, it was actually kind of funny because I was trying to speak in English again and I couldn't speak in English at all. All that would come out was the heavenly prayer language. He took away my English language, my English vocabulary in that moment so that I knew that I knew that it was the presence of God in my life. that my prayer language was from Him and Him alone. My husband thought it was a pretty funny moment. And we're half laughing and half still talking in tongues. And he's, well, if we're on the way home and I get stopped by a cop, I'll get you to talk to him. Now, eventually I started speaking in English again. But that, mom that time, that moment of being connected with the Holy Spirit and only being able to speak in my prayer language, no matter how hard I tried to speak in English, God can give us experiences in moments like that. When we have doubts, when we have uncertainties, when we want to know that it's God, I would have never have dreamt of him taking away 
my English language. So God can do all kinds of things to clarify, to make sure that we know that it is God giving us direction and telling us what to do with our lives. God's amazing. And so often, we think we have to know or we think we have to do something. We think we have to be certain. But the reality is, we just need to be certain. We've got God holding us in His arms and in His care. That's all that really matters. At the end of the day, if we walk with God and God's got us in the palm of His hand, there isn't anything else out there that matters. Our Father in Heaven is so amazing. His ability to create life is extremely amazing and be everything that He's designed us to be. He's a mighty God in the universe. Kind of doing this one backwards. I've got the spruce tree that I'm trying to put in behind the poplar and the oak tree. Sometimes we can approach things backwards. But you know, the funny thing is, I'm just reminded that we may find our paths crooked. And we may think we have to straighten those paths out and that we have to do things in different order. But God says, don't even try. Just follow the plan I have for you. When you try to go in there and make things straight, it's not going to work. Because my plan is perfect. My plan is everything that it's supposed to be. I created the universe, I created the laws of the universe. There we go. Forest is taking shape nicely now. Often with even with spruce trees I tend to like to use some blue instead of just green because green is such a harsh pigment if you use some blue in the bottom portions of it and then go in with green it's a little softer in here and then I'm gonna go in with my green on top of the blue get some of that lovely tone happening I'll let that one dry a little bit
There's a saying <laughs> just popped into my head. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. There can be so many things in our way that we can't actually enjoy what's right in front of us. What is God putting right in front of you? Because I believe God has some special things for people today. God wants to release some creative things over people's lives. So I'm going to speak to that and release His creative anointing over somebody. God wants people to thrive in His world. God wants people to experience His anointing in their life, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their life. Now you may not believe in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you may not believe in speaking in tongues. I grew up in a church that didn't even teach about it, didn't speak into it. Lots of churches avoid it. And I think there's never been a time when it's more necessary than right now. We need to know that the Holy Spirit is alive and present and walking with us every single day, walking with us on our journey, walking with us in our struggles, walking with us as we're going into battle, walking with us as we're hunting, if we're hunting or if we're gathering to store things in the storehouse, we need to know that God's got us. We need to trust that God is with us, that God is for us. That He's not forgotten or left us behind in any single thing. God in heaven is so amazing that He wants you to know that He's got you. And you could live in His creative power and anointing, whatever that looks like, to release things for the kingdom of God, to be His light in the world. I want to see the light of God shining out. Sometimes putting leaves onto the trees is a very slow and tedious process. So what do you think God is speaking over your life today? What words does He have for you specifically? What have you been afraid to take out and look at? Because it might lead you in a direction that you're 
a little bit afraid to go. I want to challenge you to spend time with God, to sit down in His presence and let Him speak to you one-on-one, -on -one. to experience His anointing and His presence. And it could be just as simple an exercise as opening up your Bible and reading something that jumps off the page at you to see what God is speaking. Sometimes in the beginning that's a really easy way to connect with God. Just to take His word and sit down and see what He has to say about that particular word. And most Bibles have reference scriptures to the scripture. So we might highlight one scripture and then there might be a reference in relation to that scripture that leads you someplace else. And all of a sudden, you're getting some insight and communication from God that just really resonates in your heart. It's one of the ways that God can speak to us. And I love when I can find the time to I don't do it as, as often as I should. I really need to make more time and longer times to sit at his feet and hear from him. Because when I do that, he gives me direction. He gives me wisdom and words about what to do next or what to focus on next. But sometimes he gives me dreams. God speaks through our dreams. God is never silent. The question is, are we listening? Are we taking the time to listen? Are we taking the time to sit in the river and hunt for that fish? Are we taking the time to connect with Him? Or do you expect God's not even bothering with you. Do you feel like he's forgotten about you? Because I know that he has not forgotten. He's got everybody in the palm of his hand. But when we feel that distance, it's usually because of us. And we need to go and just sit down and reconnect with him because he's waiting for you. He's always waiting. He's always, always hoping that you're going to be available to come and connect with Him. God who created the universe wants to hang out with you and he wants to hang out with you today and he wants to begin to change some things in your life but are you ready for him are you listening are you sitting at his feet A little bit of green in that brush. I 
And you might say, well, I'm not perfect. Why would God want me? I've made a lot of mistakes. My life's not even a very good example, so who would even believe me? Well, that's what grace is all about. The grace of God in our life and through our life. Because I can tell you right now, every single one of us has had a life that's not good enough. A life that's marred by some kind of sin. And it's nothing but the grace of God that brings us to where we are now, sitting at his feet. That was his actual plan, his perfect plan from the beginning, was to show us that we needed him so that we could connect to him, so that we would know who the created God of the universe is and that we would know that he wants to be in our life and to be part of our story. But it's up to us. It's up to us to decide if we're gonna make that choice. If we are going to connect with the creator of the universe and walk with him. So to sum up our show today, we've been talking about taking risks, stepping out, doing something different, and yet at the same time doing what we created to do by the God that was in heaven. From the very beginning of time, he created and designed us to shine for him. And so, the word I want to leave you with today is if you don't know what that is, and what that looks like, sit at his feet and take his word and ask him. And then I would love to hear from you what he says and what he shares. Because I believe we're all on this journey together. We don't walk alone. We walk as a believers in the body, as one great family of God. So I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you and hear your comments and hear your feedback. This has been another episode of Painting the Scriptures with True Word Television, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. You are watching the True Word Television, spreading the true word of salvation.
golden queen. You are watching the True Word Television, spreading the true word of salvation.